over the weekend, the New York Times uh, came out with this big story where they had these very, you know, these very uh, serious anonymous sources in the intelligence community, uh, you know, quote unquote, uh, who were saying that uh, uh, Russia was paying the Taliban to hunt down Americans and that Trump knew and he let it happen. Um, I guess because he just loves Putin so much, so he, he's okay with Putin hiring the Taliban to go kill American soldiers. Now, this story has been pretty heavily, I, I don't know, if, I can't use the word debunked because it's, it's all he said, she said, but I, I think it, it's been pretty heavily um, rebutted. Uh, by uh, the U.S., by Russia, and the Taliban. So all three involved parties denied that this was going on. And in fact, um, you know, not only was this just an unconfirmed rumor, uh, you know, we're being told now, but the president hadn't even been told about it because it wasn't considered to be a, you know, a serious enough rumor uh, f to warrant, you know, wasting the president or the, vi or the vice president's time with it. But this is the easy stuff. You could have figured this out on your own. All you have to do is, uh, uh, you know, see the headline, see all the people talking about Trump covering up more things that Russia did, and you can pretty much guess that that's wrong. Um, but to me, what was more interesting about this um, is just sort of what's taken for granted by the New York Times in this story, um, what's taken for granted by all of Trump's opponents. Um, and that, of course, is that the U.S. not only has a right to be in Afghanistan, but that, uh, you know, the president needs to be actively engaging in, uh, you know, prosecuting this war as aggressively as possible. Um, you know, it's, a, it's another very funny psyop to where the, uh, you know, these anonymous leakers, uh, these uh, intel folks, uh, the spooks, have riled up the left of, you know, of all groups in America into being mad at Trump because he's not hawkish enough. They're mad that Trump isn't going hard enough against the Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, you know, almost 20 years after the U.S., uh, you know, invaded that country. I'm old enough to remember when the left thought that wars were a bad thing. I remember a time when the left wanted to leave the people in the Middle East alone who thought that America was the aggressor and that the U.S., you know, had no right to go in and start bombing civilians in all these different countries, um, you know, hurting people who didn't hurt us. You know, back on 9-11, there were only, what, maybe uh, somewhere around uh, 300 Al-Qaeda members in the whole world. Um, and so, you know, a lot of leftists saw the, the response from the Bush administration, uh, you know, bombing thousands of people um, and, and killing lots of civilians, you know, a very small percentage of which, um, you know, just a fraction of a percent were those original Al-Qaeda members. But now we're so far beyond that. The left doesn't care. Uh, the left um, just wants to be, you know, for whatever Orange Man is against. And so if they're told Orange Man is uh, this, uh, this weak dove who doesn't like fighting wars, well, then they're just going to embrace war all they can and say, we need to have more war. We need to have more troops in Afghanistan. We need to be tougher on the Taliban. And beyond that, I mean, the, the story itself is, is ridiculous in another way, not just how the left is reacting to it, but I mean, uh, the, what, what is sort of implied here is that the Taliban um, needs some incentive from Putin to want to go out and kill American troops, as if American troops aren't like in their country occupying it. You know, the Taliban don't need anyone to pay them to go kill Americans. They want to kill the American troops who are there because they don't want them in their country. That's been pretty clear since 2001. The Taliban does not want any U.S. troops around. They're not, you know, a roving band of bounty hunters, uh, you know, like Boba Fett, who just have a rough background and, and go around, uh, you know, hunting down uh, of these rebels, these valiant warriors on behalf of the evil emperor Putin. The Taliban are a bunch of, you know, goat herding farm boys um, who just don't like all of these Yankees hanging around their neighborhood. You know, they're a pretty primitive people. If Putin gave them a bunch of rubles, I don't even know necessarily uh, what an individual Taliban soldier would do with that. There's not much commerce in Afghanistan, I guess, other than the drug trade. If there is any uh, positive thing really, though, to get out of this story, um, it's that 
Uh, I think it's becoming clear to, mo to really reasonable people um, when these sorts of stories come out that they are total nonsense. There, was, there were no serious people taking this story seriously over the weekend, um, other than, you know, I guess the New York Times reporter who takes himself very seriously, of course. But the only people who were, who were you know, piling onto this and thinking it held any credibility uh, were sort of your resistance NPC types, not your honest leftists uh, and certainly none of your right-wingers. And that represents, you know, a great deal of progress in my view, um, because it used to be that the media could very easily whip up all of America left and right into a frenzy by saying that, uh, you know, some enemy of the U.S. is doing not naughty things and the U.S. needs to go punish them. And so it is, um, I think, uh, a, a good side effect of our uh, incredibly, um, you know, destructive political division in this country that... Uh, you know, there is no more, you know, centrist consensus when it comes to anything, uh, and that includes foreign policy. The bipartisan foreign policy consensus might be done for good. And its death is something that we should all celebrate. Uh, it means that there will be a lot more innocent people in this world um, who don't have to die, at least not at the hands of our government, so I won't feel guilty about it. There might be a lot of innocent people killed by other governments or other groups, um, but you know I won't feel like that blood's on my hands. At least I will. Um, I'll no longer have that uh, that pain in the back of my mind. And you could say that well, that's selfish, but uh, you know what? I don't care. My rule is do no harm. And if a government that I partially fund. Um, through you know what le what uh, little bit uh, percentage of this budget I actually pay in taxes because of course you know even if you took all the taxes um, of all Americans that doesn't cover even half of the government's budget but still I feel like I I hold some uh, responsibility I feel like that I have some tie uh, to uh, to the government that does this, these things overseas. But of course, you know, as even though the, the consensus, the rhetorical consensus has broken down, um, the machine of the, the national security state marches on. Um, you know, most Americans uh, will uh, definitely have no idea that the war in Afghanistan is still going on. Nobody's thought about it in years. Um, yet there are still Americans over there dying and there are still uh, Afghans being killed every day in this war. Of course, you know, a lot of those Afghans would die anyway if the U.S. left because Afghanistan's just a violent place. Um, it hasn't been uh, stable, I guess, since probably uh, the early communist years or you could say the time of the monarchy. So, you know, 40, 50 years, somewhere in that range, definitely over 40 years. And so I think Americans, uh, you know, if you asked any given American, they would uh, understand that there's nothing that the U.S. can do at this point to change that. Um, all we can do is stop making the problem worse, and maybe uh, the Afghans will be able to solve things amongst themselves eventually. But even if they don't, it was none of our business to begin with. Just like it's not the rest of the world's business so much um, that uh, the U.S. right now um, is going through a, a you know a, a period of unrest, although not unrest you know anywhere um, near on par with you know like any given day in Afghanistan. So with that said, if you gain anything of value to this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day, and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.